this video, we're going to answer the question, what is clinical research? We're going to talk about the steps taken to complete a clinical trial, different types of clinical research, and why this might be important for you. Let's start off with, why is this important for you? Pulmonary hypertension is a complicated disease that we need to know more about. Clinical research helps us better understand pulmonary hypertension and why it happens. The more we know about pulmonary hypertension, the better understanding we have of how to treat it. And that starts and ends with more research in the pulmonary hypertension field. So the question, what is the purpose of clinical research? To answer questions formulated by the medical community that will lead to improved understanding of a disease, improved diagnostic testing, or improved patient management, also known as treatment. So how does this all start? What and how are questions answered in medicine in general? Some questions that we come up with are, what causes disease? What is the prognosis of a disease? What tests are useful to diagnose the disease? What approaches are most useful to treat diseases? Does a new drug work? What dose of the drug is best? Or does the new drug cause harm? Once researchers have these questions, what comes next? How do they attain the resources they need? To take a step back, research studies are often sponsored either by an industry or they are investigator initiated. Industry sponsored studies are developed and paid for by a company involved in the medical industry such as pharmaceutical company or medical device company. That company will develop a question regarding one of their products such as one of their medications or devices. An industry sponsored study often has a large amount of funding and involves multiple clinical sites. On the contrary, an investor-initiated study starts with a question developed by an investigator who is often a physician or nurse member of a pulmonary hypertension team. Funding in investigator-initiated studies is much more difficult to obtain, and as such, often only one or a few sites are involved. There are different steps in any clinical research study. The first step is proposal to an IRB. What is that? An IRB is an institutional review board. Researchers will send a detailed proposal to an institution's IRB and a consent form to gain IRB approval. The IRB is a group of people, often including providers, or members of the public who ensure that research protocols are safe for subjects that enroll in the study. A research protocol will only be approved when risks from research are minimized and are acceptable given the potential benefit of the study to the patient. Any serious events, such as side effects, that occur during the research study must be reported to the IRB by the investigators. There is also a Data Safety Monitoring Board, or DSMB, that follows the study to ensure that it is safe to continue. For example, if a study finds many patients in one group are doing poorly, the study may be stopped if it could be unsafe to be in that arm of the study. On the opposite end, if a treatment is working very well, a study may be stopped early to speed up publication or approval of the medication being tested. The next step after obtaining IRB approval is grant funding. Grant funding is often needed for clinical research. The funding may be used to pay for medications that are used in the study, pay for diagnostic tests such as blood tests or chest x-rays, or to pay for human resources such as a statistician or research coordinator to help see the study to completion. Grant funding can come from a variety of sources and is often obtained after a grant submission has been approved by the funding body. After IRB approval and successful grant funding, the next step is subject recruitment. We must find participants that fit the measures of what we want to study. 
A couple of terms to know here on how we do what we do are inclusion criteria, which is a specific list of characteristics that someone must have to participate in a clinical research trial. Examples that you will often see of inclusion criteria are age over 18, or specific to pulmonary hypertension, someone who's been stable on a pulmonary hypertension medications for three months. We also have exclusion criteria, which is a specific list of characteristics that you must not have in order to participate in a clinical research trial. Examples of exclusion criteria would be pregnancy or end-stage renal disease. We also have a consent form for subject recruitment. A consent form is a document which must explain the study in a way that you, the subject or the patient, can understand the purpose of the research, the potential risks, and the potential benefits involved. The consent process is unhurried and a chance for you to ask questions so that you ensure you have complete understanding of the study. A copy of the consent form is provided to all potential subjects. Here's a tip. If you are trying to determine if the findings of a research study can be applied to you, then look at the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria to see if you are like the people in the study. If you are considering joining a clinical research study, and aren't sure if the study is for you, you can gain further knowledge by reaching out to the study investigator or research coordinator. After recruitment is time for study participation or completion of the clinical trial. The study protocol outlines the events of the study from start to finish to get an idea of what being in the study will involve. The protocol will include the number of study visits and what tests are involved at each visit. At any time during the study, you as a patient have a right to withdraw if you feel like the study is no longer a benefit to you. One important thing to know if you are participating in a research study is something called event reporting. Event reporting is the responsibility of the subject. This means it is your responsibility to report any side effects, emergency department, or urgent care visits to an investigator or study coordinator. Next comes interpretation and reporting of the results. During a study, there is a very large amount of data that is collected and generated. This starts with patient characteristics. Characteristics such as age, gender, race, ethnicity, and treatment at time of enrollment are recorded and compared. There's also interpretation of outcomes. Examples of outcomes in pulmonary hypertension studies include six minute walk distance, echocardiographic data, or quality of life scores. We also look at change in functional class, or what your symptoms might be, emergency room visits, and hospitalization. Once we have our data, we move on to statistical analysis, which is the math behind determining what is significant from a research study. Significant is a term often used in clinical research studies, which is another way of asking, did the intervention work? The results of clinical trials are published in different medical journals as a way to share findings and to communicate with practitioners around the world. Now that we've covered the different steps of clinical research, we will break down the different types of studies available in clinical research. Before we do that, there are a couple of common terms used in research that will be good to know. You will hear them as I discuss the different types of studies. The first term is prospective, used in the setting of a prospective trial. Prospective trials enroll subjects and observe for outcomes that happen after enrollment. There's also a retrospective trial, which looks backwards and evaluates for risk factors versus protective factors of an already established outcome. For example, an established outcome could be lung cancer. If one wanted to look for risk factors of lung cancer, they could go backwards through chart review and determine what those patients did or had that increased their risk. Another type of study is a cross-sectional study. Rather than looking forward or backwards, a cross-sectional study evaluates a patient population at a specific point in time. 
Other words that you might hear frequently are randomized trials. In randomized trials, subjects are randomly assigned to treatment groups. There are also placebo-controlled trials, where one group receives placebo and another group receives a drug or intervention that is being tested. An example of a placebo is a pill that has no therapeutic benefit, such as a sugar pill. Other terms you might hear are blind, where the subjects don't know which research group they're in, versus double-blind, where both the subjects and investigators don't know which group the subjects are in. You will also hear the word intervention, which describes the entity being tested, such as a drug, procedure, or medical device. Lastly, you may hear of endpoints, which is another way of saying the outcomes being measured to determine if the intervention is successful or harmful. All right, now let's learn about the different types of clinical research. First, we have observational studies. An observational study is when an investigator chooses a convenient study population to observe without making any intervention or manipulation. This often happens through chart review. An investigator will make a hypothesis or come up with a question and observe for outcomes. For example, if the hypothesis is smoking causes lung cancer, an observational study would compare rates of lung cancer over time in patients who smoke and those who don't based on chart data. Another type of study is an interventional trial. In an interventional trial, an investigator chooses a specific study question. They then enroll carefully selected patients who follow well-defined study procedures. The results are analyzed to determine if a treatment is useful. For example, the hypothesis could be, drug X will improve survival in patients with pulmonary hypertension. In an interventional trial, patients with pulmonary hypertension would be enrolled into two groups a treatment and placebo. Then survival rates would be compared in both groups at the end of the study period. Another way we can perform research is through something called registries. A registry is a collection of information from patients who have a particular condition. For example, the pulmonary hypertension registry contains information about pulmonary hypertension patients. This information could include age, time of diagnosis, pulmonary hypertension treatments, and other medical conditions. That information is stored and can be used for future observational studies to monitor disease trends or effectiveness of treatment over time. Participation in a registry is completely voluntary. Patients who do sign up for registries can elect to be contacted for participation in clinical trials if they desire. Information stored in registries is de-identified, which means that any identifying information such as your name, birth date, address, or social security number is removed from the information. Another way to perform research is through biobanks. Biobanks have been successful in pulmonary hypertension research by helping us to identify the BMPR2 gene, which allows us to further personalize your treatment. We have now walked through the different types of studies, so let's talk about the phases of clinical trials. In phase one clinical trials, the primary focus is safety. The investigators will recruit a small number of healthy volunteers and give them the drug to be tested, monitoring for safety or any side effects that might occur. In a phase two trial, the focus shifts to include safety and efficacy Again, we have a small number of subjects, but this time we recruit patients with a disease to be treated. They again receive the drug, and the primary outcomes are safety and whether or not it worked. After that, a drug can go to a phase three trial, which is testing for efficacy, or does it work to treat the disease? Patients with a disease are again enrolled, but this time in large numbers, and given the drug to determine if it works. After that, we move to phase four, which means the drug has been approved to treat the disease. The phase four period is also known as post-marketing surveillance. 
The drug has been approved and patients are actively taking it, but we are constantly monitoring it for continued safety. In summary, the trials and phases all add up to the outcomes commonly used in clinical trials. Outcomes are expected or tested results of any trial. Common outcomes that you might see are disease-free survival or how long after the treatment a subject has no signs or symptoms of the disease. Progression-free survival is the length of time after treatment that a subject has a disease but it does not get any worse. And time to clinical worsening is how long it takes to see worsening of the disease after intervention. In conclusion, clinical research is used to better understand disease processes so that we may best know how to treat them. Clinical research can be performed in many ways with different study designs, but all studies are first approved by an IRB to ensure patient and subject safety. There are many ongoing research studies for pulmonary hypertension, along with an active registry through the Pulmonary Hypertension Association. We hope this video has helped you to answer your question, what is clinical research, and has helped you to understand why research is important for you, the patient living with pulmonary hypertension. Music